Hi guys, this is Shivarati. Welcome to the session on Java Multithreading. In this session, we are going to look at how uh, in previous tutorials, I explained about how you can restrict the access of any shared resources by allowing only one thread at a time by using the synchronization. But uh, the latest Java like Java 1.6 onwards, there is a advanced locking mechanism it, uh, it has uh, introduced in the Java 1.6 which is going to have um, have different uh, ways you can still go ahead and add uh, you can restrict the access of shared resources in more um, more flexible and uh, uh, flexible and which is going to improve the performance of the application uh, than like is um, the older way how we are implementing using the synchronization so first let us discuss about the um, what are the different ways we have seen how to handle or how to control the resources uh, uh, shared resources by allowing only one thread that is by using the synchron uh, synchronization so first one we have seen about the synchronization block and it has a shorter duration of the locking mechanism and by default these are going to use the intrinsic locks that means whenever um, whenever any thread want to access any shared resources it has to take a query lock on it and then it will process the block and then while execution of while exiting the block it is going to release the lock so that is what the basically synchronization only one thread it is going to allow uh, one thread at a time to access the shared resources. So if you see the uh, synchronization method and the static synchronization all are about controlling and shared resources when multiple threads are trying to access only one thread at a time. So the another way of handling this one, uh, under, another way you can achieve uh, the same rest the same control through the locking also so lock is the latest concept which was introduced in the latest version of java in order to uh, handle the shared resources in more efficient and flexible way for example now what happens is if during the uh, synchronization block or method how many threads it is trying to parallel uh, how many uh, threads it is trying to access the shared resources the only one thread at a time it is going to be added in the uh, allow into the synchronized uh, or monitoring monitor uh, or monitor of the condition uh, condition we will call as a monitor session and then our critical session we will call as a critical session so and remaining threads all will be in the queue let us consider there is a thousand request parallel it is trying to access then the from the first thread onwards it will process one by one and it is uh, actually impacting the performance of the remaining threads which is waiting for to acquire the log even sometimes what happens is even either a uh, starvation might be happening because the low priority thread never comes to the execution of the uh, synchronized block or the method of the static synchronization and uh, of, by using the synchronization there is no way you can uh, go ahead and interrupt one particular thread which is trying to access a uh, which is trying to waiting for in uh, waiting for the lock on the particular resource that means and also you cannot prioritize the um, sequence of the threads when uh, when any thread is waiting for a particular um, lock on the particular resource that means if let us consider 100 threads are waiting and there will be a uh, there is no way you can you can uh, you can change the priorities of the queues based on the uh, la, uh, most uh, the thread which is waiting for the more time should get the uh, set uh, should get the highest priority to execute that critical session or the synchronized block then those type of flexibility is not there uh, when when you are considering the synchronization implementation but if you i'm going to explain a little bit about the one using the one program it is for the simple just a simple to explain about the syntax is like for example, this is a synchronized block, and now 100 threads are coming to uh, coming parallelly to execute this block. Then what happens is, in the case of synchronized block or method or static synchronization, remaining 100 threads will be waiting in the queue, and only one thread at a time it will allow to execute this block. Once thread comes into, it will acquire the lock, execute the block, and then it is going to release the lock. Then second thread will come. For example, now if you want to uh, 100 threads, the 100 threads is keep on waiting from the 
waiting from the time when first thread is started and keep on waiting till the 100th thread it is completed because only one thread at a time it will allow into this critical session. Now that is the reason what happens is the starvation will happen one thing and uh, let us consider when it is doing and the another priority threads are coming then the 100th thread is never come to this block because of that starvation will happen and second one is if you want to prioritize the threads for example if you want to um, allow the allow to this critical session based on the uh, timestamp for example one thread is waiting for a long time you want to give, give the priority to the thread which is waiting for the long time then by using this synchronized block you don't have flexibility to give that option so and also uh, it is always keep on waiting for the thread but is there any way you can particular thread want to take the lock immediately whenever it is acquired then it is not possible and one more drawback is even for the whenever you are accessing the shared resources even read and write operations also will be serialized that means even some uh, some thread it is trying to read the value also getting blocked until write is happening and that means basically synchronized at any point of time only one thread it is going to execute it either it might be a read or write operation so these are the some of the drawbacks uh, uh, drawbacks it is not the drawback but it is uh, going to impact the performance of the application hence there is a another way you can handle the uh, uh, you can control the access of and share resources by using the locking. So lock is an interface by which it is going to implement the locking mechanism in a more efficient and flexible way by using that the developer can uh, can uh, can uh, enhance the uh, functionality how we can restrict the shared resources by allowing multiple threads uh, in the uh, in the multi-threading environment first let us see what is meant by lock implementation so lock is basically an um, providing and more extinction operations can be obtained uh, which is which is not possible through the synchronization for example what happens is this is going to allow more flexible by constructing or may have the quite different properties and uh, may support multiple associated condition objects and what happens is a lock is a tool for controlling the access of a shared resources by the multiple threads commonly what happens is a lock is um, provides an exclusive shared um, uh, exclusive access to the shared resources that means only one thread at a time it can allow the access on the particular resource and here one more thing is like based on the different implementation of the locking what it is going to do is whenever a read operation is happening on the share resource until write operation is for example there are two operations is happening that means read operation is happening write operation happening now locking mechanism uh, having the few set of implementation like a re-entrain to read or a read write or lock or the read like uh, read lock or the write lock these things what it is going to do is as long as there is no operation is a uh, write operation is performing then it will allow the multiple threads trying to read the value so that at least the reading operation will not block the uh, block when there is no write is happening but in the case of synchronization what happens is even for the reading threads also if there is no write is also hap uh, not happening but still it will allow only one thread at a time to read the value of a shared resource. So that type of granularity it is also there. And also it has the lock has a few uh, lock a few methods like try lock. So what these are the few a uh, few methods it has which is going to help you to get the prioritization of the locking. What it is going to do is if when you say try lock it it is going to check if if it is any thread is uh, available uh, if the if there is a lock is available or not if not then immediately this by using this one you can get the lock acquired immediately on the particular shared resource if no other thread is trying to access on the on the particular shared resource then try lock will also uh, will give you the give uh, system will give the lock on the object immediately and it can take the uh, lock it can process and then you you can go ahead and unlock the resource so those type of few um, those type of uh, options available in the locking and also you have the fairness policy that means if you take the uh, re uh, return return lock what happens is you whenever you create a lock it has the fairness policy fairness policy in the sense 
fairness in uh, fairness in the sense what happens is whenever uh, you create an uh, uh, reentrant log what happens is you can you can have a multiple threads are going to be read and multiple threads are going to be write then fairness policy what it is going to tell you is that whenever if you say enable true then what what this uh, reentrant log is going to do is it will keep on tracking for the what is the thread which is keep on waiting for the longest time and based on that the next whenever uh, the next chance is going to be given to the highest priority highest priority which is logging uh, which is waiting for the long time in the queue to acquire the release on the lock so that type of fairness policy is also available in the um, in the case of um, uh, locking and and also uh, if you if you if you are not sure that whether uh, you will get the uh, lock on immediately when you say try lock then we have a, another flexible methods to say that okay you can put the time stamp also that means time stamp in the sense if you say wait for the 5 seconds where, um, bef um, to acquire the lock then first it will check whether the lock is available or not uh, free to take the lock on the particular object if not then it is going to wait for the 5 seconds in the meantime it is getting it is going to acquire the lock otherwise it will be returned so that type of complex uh, that type of flexibility you can use through the um, locking functionality okay and one more thing is if you want to interruptible if you want to take an uh, lock by interrupting the thread also it is possible so those type of flexible methods you can find in the you can find in the um, you can find in the locking implementations i am going to explain in detail about the each locking uh, each implementation of the lock in the subsequent tutorials but at this point of time we are trying to see that what is the basic advantages when we go with the synchronization with the locking and in the case of uh, locking the the one of the um, uh, one of the use case it might be may or may not be possible with the uh, with the uh, sy synchronized block is in the case of synchronized block what happens is if you want to acquire a lock before starting up the block itself and then you have to within the curly braces you need to make sure that you need to release the lock but in the case of uh, locking what happens is you can take a lock on, lock on the particular resource at any point of time then later you can acquire a different locks and then you can again uh, release the lock in the same fashion in the different context so that type of flexibility it is there so uh, one point here is like in the case of locking what happens is you can acquire a lock on particular point of time and even uh, one one even some some of the uh, locks like a reentrant lock what happens is you can first initially take the write lock and then you can degrade the lock to the read lock and again you can release the read lock and at the again you can release the write lock that means at any point of time it has a flexibility to convert from the uh, to acquire the locks from the one one uh, acquire the multi, take the multiple locks based on the context you want and also if you have a, any scenario like a chain based for example you want to acquire a lock on a, a and then uh, then next you need to acquire a lock on b then you need to uh, uh, release the lock on a and then acquire the lock on the c and release the lock on the b then if you have any type of this uh, situational uh, the chain process of uh, acquiring the locks and releasing the locks then the locking uh, implementations are going to be a best suitable uh, implementations to achieve the better performance hope um, you are clear with the synchronization uh, what is the main uh, difference between the uh, synchronization concept how to restrict the access on a shared resources by allowing a only one thread at a time versus the locking how uh, flexibility and granularity it has come up with the uh, to handle uh, to to handle the uh, shared resources by allowing the only one thread at a time so I am going to explain uh, in detail about the each implementation subsequent tutorials. Um, please do um, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more technical videos and uh, thanks for watching.